What's up everyone? Uh, we, for this week we're going to start a new project and we're going to do some <coughs> keyframing and some transformations and also we're going to use what's known as the speed graph <coughs> to uh, play with the speed of the uh, bouncing ball. So this assignment is called Bouncing Ball Fine-Tuning Velocity. Okay, And so first thing we want to do is um, build our uh, ball or object that we're going to have bounce in from the background into the foreground. So I'm going to go into Photoshop first. I'm going to build a uh, I'm going to build a tennis ball. So that's what I decided to do. And let's go ahead and go to my apps here. We're going to go to Photoshop here. So the first thing you'll want to do is build a uh, some kind of a ball. So we're going to go new file, and let's just do, yeah, 640 by 480 is fine at 300 parts per inch, whatever you want. I'm going to do that one. And uh, here's my background. If you, the background's always locked, so if you want to unlock it, just double click it. Click OK, and we'll call this background. Okay, so you can go ahead and name your uh, background there by double clicking it. And we'll just make sure our foreground is set to black, which it is here on the circle. I mean on the square, sorry. Let's grab our paint bucket here. Fill that in. Okay. And so now we're going to add a new layer. So if I go down to the bottom of the layers window here, I'm going to click the plus sign there inside the box. That'll create a new layer. And I'm just going to draw a circle here for my ball. That looks pretty good right there. And let's choose a nice color for our tennis ball here. That looks pretty good. A little more yellow in there. There we go. That'll work. And again, grab my paint bucket. And that looks pretty good there. And I'm just going to leave that selection there. And I'm going to create a new layer. So I'm going to click the plus sign here again. And I'm going to move that selection over to about here and uh, let's just make this really easy here yeah about right there and then I'm gonna fill that in more of a grayish color so I'm gonna switch this to white here in the foreground and then bring it down here to a man yeah, that's probably good right there click OK and we're gonna fill that in again with the paint bucket and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab the uh, selection tool here and just move this selection over a little bit. Maybe to about there. That looks pretty good. And I'm just going to hit delete. And that create, that'll help create one of my uh, stripes there. Okay. So control D to deselect. And now I want to get rid of that excess. Probably the easiest way to do it would be to go back to my second layer. Click on my uh, magic wand tool and just select that area. And then go back to the layer that I want to erase, which is this one here. With that selection area. And then instead of erasing the inside, if I grab my eraser now, it's just going to erase what's on the inside of that selection. So control Z. Instead, I want to go up to Select and choose Inverse or Shift-Control-I. So if I choose the Inverse now, all it's going to do is erase everything on the outside of that selection. Do you see how that works? So now I've got that stripe done just by doing that um, Inverse there. Okay, so Control-D to deselect that. And now I can go into this layer here, grab my magic wand, and just select that. And well, actually, let's just uh, let's do let's do something else. Control D to deselect. Let's just duplicate this layer. So right click on it, choose duplicate layer, click OK, and then what we'll do is grab our move tool and just move this duplication over. And then what we're going to do is just flip this, okay? So layer two copy here, I'm going to go ahead and go up to um, edit, transform. And we're going to rotate this thing 180 degrees, right? So that was easy. 
So now I'll grab my move tool and I should be able to just move this one right into place where I'm going to need it. That looks pretty good right about there. All right. So there's my there are my stripes. That green is a little bright, so I'm going to select that area and just go up to edit or uh, image adjustments hue saturation. Make that maybe a little bit darker, maybe adjust the uh, hue a little bit. Okay, that looks pretty good right there. Click OK. And also I can grab my paintbrush here and add a little texture if I want. Although I don't know that you'll see much of that texture. But if I go up here, I can click on this for my brushes. And notice here I've got some different brushes to try. I'm just going to go to general brushes and see what I can find here. Okay, and those are kind of uh, not what I'm looking for. Um, let's try special effects brushes. So maybe a spatter brush might be good. Yeah, that could work. Um, let's go smaller with it though. So to make it smaller, use left bracket tool. And we'll change the color here. Let's change it back to a green. But we'll make it a little bit darker so it looks almost like fuzz on the ball. Now let's make that even smaller here. Here we go. And just click in there. And notice there I'm getting some splatter outside of the ball. So if that happens, what you can do again is go up and grab your magic wand select that area then you can just stay within that area with your brush now watch i can click all over the place and it's not going to go outside of that okay i'm just adding a little detail a little fuzz to the ball okay and so you can add some texture to it i'm not sure why it's not real dark there so let's go up to our brush settings maybe here and take a look here. Oh, yeah, let's go. Bring the spacing down. Not sure I can do much about the hardness at this point. It looks like it's probably 100%. And uh, see if that helps. Okay, so bring that down. Yeah, and there you can see it's closer together now because I've moved the spacing back a little bit. Anyway, you probably won't see much of that, but you can add texture to your objects too if you want, just by using the brushes. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, Control D to deselect. And there's my ball. So the next thing I want to do, it looks like I got a little bit of extra there. So let me, uh, let's change my uh, brush here. Or better yet, let's go to my eraser. And, uh, or better yet, let's keep the, yeah, let's keep the paintbrush. And this time we'll go back to our general brushes. Um, let's go. Well, let's see here. Yeah, here we go. So this is the menu we wanted. And then I'm just going to grab just a regular old round brush and grab my, uh, brush tool. And let's do black. So I'm going to grab my um, color picker tool. Let's see, where is that? There it is. And I'm just going to select the black that's already in there and then grab my brush. And basically, I'm just going over those little spots with a brush there. That's not a good brush here. Let's, let's try a flatter brush here. And let's go to brushes here. And we are going to search brushes. And we're going to use a general hard round brush. There we go. And let's bring the let's bring it down, make it smaller, and then there, there we go. So just go get your general hard edge brush there, and then we're just getting rid of some of that excess. Okay, that looks pretty good. Actually, I think I hit a little bit of it that I shouldn't have. So just get those little dots out of there. Good enough. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to turn off the background. And notice there I had a little extra in my uh, layer, so I'm going to erase that. So let me grab my eraser here. Bracket tool on the right. The right bracket tool will bump it up. Just take your time here. 
And now that we have all the black removed and the ball is kind of isolated on its own layer like that, we can export this out now as a uh, PNG. Okay, and you want to export it as a PNG file because PNGs will eliminate the background. If you save it out as a JPEG, Photoshop will automatically add a background to it. Okay, so right click on the layer itself without any background that you want to keep. Actually, let's let's flatten this first. So let's take these three layers. We're going to flatten these into one layer. So I'm going to go up to layer here. Just make sure you're selected on one of the visible layers. Turn off any layers that you don't want to combine. Go up to layer and we'll choose merge visible right here. So layer merge visible. Now notice this is all one layer. <clears throat> That's what we want. Okay, now we can right click on it and we can do a quick export as PNG. So I'm going to click on that. I'm going to name this tennis ball. And it's a PNG here, you can see. And I'm just for now going to save it to my desktop. I'm going to click Save. And that's all you have to do for your tennis ball, okay? You can also save the uh, Photoshop file if you need to. Okay, so File, Save, don't forget. Call this tennis ball if you want. And we'll just tell it to save on the computer as a Photoshop file. Save to your desktop. Okay, so we can close this now that we've saved it. And notice here my tennis ball is right here on my desktop. Okay, and I can double click on it and you'll see there's no background. It's just the ball. We're ready to bring that into After Effects. Okay, everybody, now that we've got our tennis ball done and uh, we can now go into after Effects, of course, and set up our file. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead and go into After Effects. Okay, new project, new composition here, and we are going to set up a 720 by 540. Uh, our lock aspect ratio is off. That's good. Let's just punch in our numbers here. 720, 540, and we're looking at 20 frames a second this time. And our duration here looks like it's going to be at least 5 seconds. So let's just do that. We'll keep 5 seconds here. It's already set up. 720 by 540, 20 frames a second at 5 seconds. Click OK. The file is set up and ready to go. Probably the first thing we want to do is we can rename our comp. So maybe we'll call this one our final here. So comp one, if you go up to the project window here, you can right click on it where it says comp one here and rename that. So I'm going to just call this uh, final video so I know that everything's going to be compiled into this one. Okay. And notice here it changes the name down here as well. So now what I'm going to do is create a new composition. This time, though, I'm going to call it um, One Second Bounce, because this one's only going to be one second long. I want to have the same uh, setting, 720 by 540, 20 frames a second. The only thing we'll change on this new composition is our duration is going to be only one second. Okay, And that's our one second bounce, so that's going to be right here. Again, one second all the way across here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to import the ball. So import file. Grab our PNG. And once that's in there, we're going to drag this into our one second bounce composition. Open up the controls here. And let's scale this thing down because we're going to do a little ball bounce here. Maybe to about there. And let's change the position. It's going to start up here at the top and bounce from the top down to the ground here. So, um, And let's scale it down maybe just a little bit more. About there is good. Okay. So we can uh, keyframe that if we want to. Or better yet, we don't even need to keyframe it to start. Position, though, we will want to keyframe this here. 
And what we're going to do is just create a little balance here. So I'm going to go halfway to about 10 frames. And we're going to just bring this thing down to about there. And then we're going to hit end to send our uh, scrub key to the end. And then we're just going to click on the first keyframe here, control C to copy it. Choose control V and notice it pastes it over here at the end. So we have our little bounce here. But notice there it's going at a very even rate. So what we're going to do is we're going to simulate gravity here by using the value graph. And so to access the value graph, once you create your keyframes and make sure you're in the um, <clears throat> transformation where there are keyframes, if you go just up here on the timeline here, just above your uh, layers here, there's a little graph editor here. You're going to click that. And here, what we're seeing is the value graph here. If you go down to the bottom of this value, in fact, let's, let me show you this. When I scrub this over, notice that it's showing you the position of X and Y. Y is obviously the uh, green line, right? Because that's where the change is happening. X is staying constant, okay? So basically now what we're going to do is change our view here from this value graph to what's called the speed graph. So if I go down to the bottom here of the timeline, in my graph view, of course, I'm going to click this little chart here. It says choose graph type and options. Click once on that. And then instead of edit value graph, we're going to go to speed graph. So click edit speed graph. You're going to see something that looks like this. And since a ball bouncing is uh, the acceleration or the velocity is going to increase over time and decrease over time, depending on how gravity affects it, we're going to change our uh, type of graph here from, this is on linear right now, we're going to go down here to the bottom and change this to this curved line, where it says convert selected keyframes to auto bezier. Click that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to start manipulating this graph here. So I'm going to take these points, starting, and bring these down to zero to begin with on both sides. Okay, and at about 20 frames. There we go. And uh, take a look and see how this is affecting the ball. Watch this when I bring this down. So it's going up, then down, then up again. Watch what happens. Not too much there, right? So let's go home here. Now I can take these handles on the points too. Watch this and drag these out. So I'm going to make a little bell curve. And then I click this one. Take these handles and you can shape the uh, graph the way you want it. <clears throat> Just like that. Then we'll take these middle ones and bring these up. I'm going to create kind of like a bell curve here. Just to show you how it affects the speed of the ball. <clears throat> Maybe right about there. Bring this one up here, and watch what happens when we start playing with these. We can widen these out, or we can narrow, make them more narrow. Might be good to make these kind of narrow. And then just keep adjusting the height of these by grabbing the actual point and bringing them up. And we can also keep it shaping it with this handle as well. Okay, maybe flatten that out a little bit right there. Maybe flatten this one out and have something like that. That's an, actually a really nice curve there. So there's my bell curve. Now watch what happens when the ball drops. It should increase in speed as it hits the um, slope here. And then stay fast and then decrease in speed as it starts to straighten out. Okay, so let's watch the ball here. Notice there as it falls, it increases, but when it starts to head back up, it sort of decreases. So that's kind of what a what we'd see a ball really do. So in a way, we're kind of imitating physics, right? So we can even widen these out even more here to, to really emphasize that even more, that ball slowing down. Now watch this. So you can see how when... When the line gets more sloped, the speed increases. When the line flattens out, it starts to slow down. So there you're simulating physics there in gravity. Okay, so we have our one second bounce and physics applied. Next thing we're going to do is add a little shadow to it. Okay, so I'm going to use the same uh, 
composition for my one sec bounce to also add the shadow. Before I do that though, I want to move the position of the ball over to the right hand side of the screen here. So I'm just going to go into position and I'm just going to move the horizontal portion of the motion path. And notice there, if I just move one of these, the entire path follows it. So that's good. So now I have that over to the left, I mean over to the right, and then I have room to do my shadow too. So, all right, let's do this. Now, what we're going to do is close that window and then we're just going to stay in the one second bounce. And I found a tennis court, a free picture of a tennis court online. So I'm going to use that to have a background so I can see. Um, so what I'm going to do is zoom out on that. So let me grab my magnifying glass, hold down Alt to get the minus. And then I'm going to scale that down. So let me go up here and open up the transform controls under tennis court. We're going to scale that down quite significantly here. Get the basketball court in there too. That looks good right there. Okay, so now I'm going to grab my selection tool, or better yet, my mo uh, magnifying glass and, and just zoom back in on this. That's probably good enough right there. So let's leave that. Now when you watch this, you'll see the ball bouncing right there. Okay, looks pretty good. All right, so now what we're going to do is build our shadow in here. Okay, so now you have your court and your ball and the bounce go in there. We're just going to make a shadow that goes along with this and just kind of mimics what the ball's doing. I think the easiest way would probably just to be create, to create a solid layer. So control Y or you can go up to um, layer here and choose um, new solid. Same thing, right? And I'm going to have a, I'm, it's already on black, so I'm good there. I'm going to make a black layer with the, for a shadow. And I'm actually going to move this thing beneath the tennis ball. Um, but above the tennis court here. So the reason why you can't see the tennis court is because the solid layer is covering the whole screen. However, if I put the black solid there between the tennis ball and the court, you'll see why here in just a second. I'm going to use my ellipse masking tool here and just draw a little uh, circle here. Try to make it as symmetrical as I can, like the ball. That looks pretty good right there. And once you draw your circle, you notice there that the uh, the rest of the um, solid disappears, but only keeps the area that you uh, where you actually drew the circle. So now I'm going to grab my selection tool here. Come out here, and we can move this thing around. Probably want to compare it to the ball here, and we can match the size here. So let's go to transform on that solid layer. Close the mask here for a second. And let's scale that down and kind of match the ball. Notice there when I do it, it's moving in a weird angle because the anchor point's over here. That's an easy fix. We can just fix that by moving the anchor point. Okay, and we're going to move this over. The anchor point should be about the center of the ball. Perfect. Okay, so now we can move the ball around here. And let's match the size of the ball here. Let's bring that scaling down. That's pretty close right there. And then instead of doing it exactly round, I'm going to unhook the chain here, and I'm just going to stretch that horizontally a little bit and maybe vertically bring it down um, right here. Something like that. I don't want it to be exactly round, so I'm changing the shape of it a little bit. And, uh, yeah, that should be good there. So when the ball comes down, the shadow should meet it right there. Oops, Control-Z. Again, make sure we're not clicking on one of those points there. And notice there the ball should be underneath the, I mean, the shadow should be underneath the tennis ball, which it is right there. And that's where it should be at that point. So we're just going to bring this back up to zero. And then move this over just horizontally out to about as far as you think it should go. Maybe about right there. And then we're going to keyframe the position of the shadow or the black solid here. And we can rename this shadow if you right click on it. Choose rename. Let's just call it a shadow and make it easier. And we've keyframed our first position keyframe right there. So that's good. 
So by the time the shadow or the ball gets there, the shadow will also be over. So let's move our position over to about right there where the shadow should be. That's probably good right about there. And then we'll go hit end on our keyboard. Click on the first keyframe, control C to copy, control V to paste. Okay. And so this is what we have so far. So we've got that shadow following the ball. Looks pretty good. Again, let's go back to shadow. Make sure your scrub keys at zero. And let's bring the overall scaling down again a little bit. So I just click the chain here so, so it'll do both. And that should probably do the trick right about there. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Maybe a little bit more. I like that. Okay. So the only other thing we need to think about is applying some physics to the uh, shadow also. And maybe bringing down the opacity a little bit. So we can do that first. Let's, let's check out the opacity here. And again, if you bring that down to 37%. It's there, but it's almost, it's kind of transparent. That looks closer to a shadow, right? Let's bring that up just a little bit here. Let's go down here, bring it up to about maybe 46%. I think that'll do the trick. Okay, yeah, that looks good. Now let's apply physics to that shadow also. So we're gonna go to the shadow layer here. Uh, let's open this up and go to position again. We already have our position keyframes, and we're going to go to our graph. So we'll go to position, and then we're going to go to our uh, graph editor. If we click down here, make sure speed graph is on. And again, to switch, the, if these controls down here don't show up, if they're grayed out, that's because you just need to select one of the vertices or select the line there. Once you select these over here, up here and they turn yellow, then you can switch the type of... Um, angles that you're dealing with. Here we're going to do a smooth bezier, so we're going to convert selected frames again to auto bezier. And notice here we can bring this down to zero like we did before. Bring the end one down to zero again. And we're just going to do one of those bell curves there to uh, simulate what's going on with the, the ball, right? So same thing, now we're going to um, make some adjustments down here with the handles. Grab this, and we're going to create a kind of a smooth bell curve kind of look here. Same thing over here. Click the uh, vertice and then adjust. Okay, that's about as far as I can go with that one. And so we'll go up with this also. And again, just make some start making adjustments here. That looks pretty good. And then click on this one. Do the same thing. Bring this thing back. And you can kind of simulate what we did before. We can widen these out. Um, so it's just a, it takes a little practice, but once you get the hang of this, it's really easy and it, it really makes a difference in that making the things look a little more realistic how they move. Okay, that looks pretty good. It slows down a little bit at the end, so I think maybe what I can do is go back to the shadow here, go to position, and maybe. draw these out a little bit more. Um, let's see if I can do that. I probably have to do it with these down here. Okay, create that and then maybe just do it on this side. Kind of increase that. Make these a little wider I think is what I'm trying to do basically. There we go. Bring that up. Now, let's bring that down, maybe. There we go. And then we can make our adjustments this way. All right. Getting there. Okay, so let's see if that helps there. Let's see if it looks any different. So 
still kind of slow at the end. And I think I know why. See how, see over here, the position? This is off a little bit, so we can bring this back down. Should match the other one at zero. And now we can make some adjustments here. Okay, and let's go over here. Bring that out. There we go. And increase this up a little bit. Okay, bring that there. And then just smooth the curves. And it should do pretty good right there. Okay, let's try that. Okay, and it looks like it's stopping before the ball, so I want to probably move this over just a little bit, this whole thing here. So let me see if I can do that. Bring this down. And over a little bit. That might help right there. So again, I'm just reshaping the uh, the curve here. Okay, let's see what that looks like. That's a lot better. I think I can live with that. Okay, so now I have my ball and my shadow in a one second bounce. So I'm going to keep that, and now what I'm going to do is close that, and I'm going to just get rid of the tennis court on this layer, because I don't want it on this, or in this composition. But I'm going to keep the tennis ball in the shadow in my one second bounce. And so the next step is to make a five second bounce that has the shadow and the ball in it. So I'm going to go up to composition, and I'm going to make a third composition here. New composition. And I'm going to do a 5 second, 720 by 540 at 20 frames a second. And, uh, oh, I forgot to rename it too. So I'm going to go up here and rename this. Right click on it, rename it 5 second bounce. Perfect. And notice here it already changes it down here. And so now I'm going to take my 1 second bounce that I made without the background and drop it in there. <clears throat> and I'm going to turn this into a five second bounce now. Okay, so if I play this, you see it there. You can't see the shadow because it's against a black background, but it is there. But notice there, it's still only one second. So to turn this into a five second, I'm just going to duplicate it. Control D, Control D, Control D four times. And uh, I'm going to move these together. Up top there, though, you may want to select snapping here. And this snapping here, if you just check that snapping box above the monitor window, that'll make sure that these will just snap right to the edges without any issue if you just go slow. Boom, right there, right there, and right here. So now we have a one second bounce going five times in this composition. So now it's going to bounce five, one, two, three, four, five. So now we have a five second bounce there. And now what we can do is take that five second bounce and move it into our final video composition here. So after we nested all those things going on in these layers, we can take the, or these compositions, we can take this composition and nest it in our final video. And now look, we have a five second bounce on one layer. And that includes our shadow here. And you'll see it now when I bring back the tennis court, okay? So I'm going to drop the tennis court here in our final video composition. And you can see there it is. Okay, so now let's go ahead and scale down the tennis court here. About right there, perfect. And let's go ahead and do the scaling and the positioning on the ball. And that will be pretty much all the keyframing we need to do. And so now I'm going to uh, reposition the ball or the five second bounce. So I'm going to go to transform here and I'm going to change my position. Uh, maybe we'll start it. Uh, you know, what? we can start it over on the right. 
And let's go back here a little bit. And let's scale it down too. Let's go to scale here. Let's bring that down. You can see there now we're moving over to the other, almost to the other side of the court. And then we'll scale it down some more. Get that to where it looks like it's on the other side of the court, right? Something like that. Okay, and let's move it up from the net so it doesn't look like the shadow is hitting the net, right? So let's do another position change here. Let's go up a little bit. But there we go. That looks like it's on the other side of the court now. And so now let's go ahead and make this thing come from back there to the foreground here, right? So that's what we're going to do. Um, <clears throat> all right, so let's go ahead and work on our positioning here and our scale. So the first thing I want to do is start it there, maybe scale like that, where you can see the ball there. So let's click scale. By the time it gets too close to the end there, we'll have it scale up to about, I don't know, maybe... 100%, let's try that. And then we will go home here, and with position here, I'm gonna click position there. And we'll have this thing come in. Well, I guess we don't need to adjust the position so much other than maybe the direction that it goes in. So by the time it gets here, or maybe right there, let's say, right before it goes off the screen, how about that, right there, We'll have this thing be over maybe on this side, going this way. Okay, something like that. So let's see what that looks like. In fact, we can move this over to right where the scaling is. So if you click home, you can see there now it's bouncing and it's coming in toward us over here. Yeah, so there you go. You can see the shadow happening there. Okay, and you see the physics being applied. Okay, it looks pretty good. So the last thing you might want to do in this is add a sound effect. So I did find a good uh, free sound effect there on uh, the internet. And it's a tennis ball here about. So I'm going to grab that and import that in. I'm going to drop this down where, again, we're in our final video comp. So we can do that there. Okay, and it happens right at the beginning. So I'm just going to maybe keep about that much of it, I think. Yeah, so by the time we get to the fifth frame there, I don't think we need any more. So now I'm going to split this. Um, I believe it's up here, Edit, Split Layer, or Control, plus Shift, plus D is your shortcut. And we're only going to keep this bottom piece. So I'm going to take this layer and delete it. And we should have a full bounce here. Perfect. And so we got to get this right, make sure it matches when the ball hits the ground. Okay, that's way too early, so we're going to bring this out a little ways. Well, that sounded pretty good right there. Okay, and then the second one, then we'll du duplicate this, Control D. The second one's going to occur, let's see, we can just use the scrub key about right there. So we want that thing starting here. Okay, let's see what we got so far. Perfect, and now we can do another one. Control D to duplicate it. Move this one out and we'll see when the next uh, bounce is. It's right there. So we're gonna line that one up here. Control D one more time. And it's gonna land right there. So we're gonna have one more there. And then the last one looks like it's right there. Right there, yeah. So duplicate this one more time, Control-D. We'll have one right there. And that's that should do it right there, okay? So here's what we have. And it just makes a nice, smooth loop. So basically, that's what you're doing. You're doing, uh, we're making multiple compositions. And in each composition, we're adding something to it. And then we're nesting that composition into the next until we finally get to our final video when we can nest 
our compositions to make things a little bit easier and tidier and then do our sound effects and our background. And that's basically how this project works. Okay, so the very last step is how to save this out properly. Uh, as you noticed on the assignment sheet, we are not going to render this movie out. You're going to send me the After Effects file with all the raw assets that you used um, in the project. And raw assets can be found up in your project folder here. So all of these different um, compositions, as well as your picture, your pictures, sorry, and your uh, sound effect as well. So After Effects is really awesome for this. It does it all for you, pretty much. So the first thing I'm going to have you do is make a folder. And you can make it on your desktop. So I'm going to right-click on the desktop, choose New Folder. And I'm going to call this, uh, this is our uh, Project 7. So 7-YourLastName. In this case, I'm going to call it 7 Acker. So make a folder so that you can put all of your assets into. And here's how you do it. Here's how you properly, if you, like, let's say you wanted to share this file with your friend who lives in Florida, for example, and you guys are editing a project together. This is the proper way to do it. So when your friend in Florida opens the project file, he'll, he or she will also have all of the raw assets in there as well. All the files that he or she would need. Okay, so here's the process. So once you make a folder on your desktop, you're going to go up to File, and you're going to go down to what's called Dependencies, and then you're going to choose Collect Files. So this is really awesome. After Effects is ahead of the game with this. So Collect Files, okay, and then Collect Source Files, just all. Just leave that the way it is. Click on Collect, and then now you're going to go and select that folder that you created. So I'm going to go find that folder on my desktop, 7-Acker, right there. And watch this. This is going to save everything into that folder for me. Okay, and it's done, so I can minimize this. Now when I go into 7-Acker, it says 284 Project, Ball Bouncing and Fine Tuning. Open that. Here's the project file, and here is all my raw footage. So that's the proper way to save a project file that you're going to share with somebody else who might be editing it on another computer. Okay, so that's the first step to getting this ready to upload into Canvas, is to collect all your files through that dependencies process. And now the last step in order for you to uh, attach it into Canvas, we need to create a, a compressed folder out of this. So the easiest way to do it is to right-click on the folder with your mouse, right-click, go to show, show more options if you need to, go to Send To, and then you're going to create a compressed or zipped folder. So click there, and notice here I've created a zipped folder. It's the exact same thing as this folder, only it's compressed down to a smaller size. Okay. So this folder with the zipper is what you're going to upload into Canvas. 